TV Reader's Digest. Dramatic stories from the pages of America's most popular magazine. Brought to you by the Studebaker Packard Corporation and its dealers. I'm Hugh Riley, welcoming you to another in our series of exciting stories straight from the pages of Reader's Digest. This series comes to you through the courtesy of the Studebaker Packard Corporation and its dealers, who take great pleasure in bringing you this program. Have you driven a 55 Studebaker yet? First time you do, something big and exciting happens to you. You get a completely new concept of power, Studebaker Action Power. For instance, watch this getaway, smooth and fast. That truck is really moving. But watch, in the clear, thanks to Studebaker reserve power that makes all driving safer. You won't be entering races, but your Studebaker could. Watch them go. It doesn't matter what model Studebaker you pick. President, commander, champion. Every Studebaker engine is packed with power. But power is just part of what you discover in a Studebaker. You find really distinctive good looks. This is a beautiful car. And that's true inside as well as outside. Smart new fabrics and color schemes, rich, deep comfort. And really surprising headroom and space to make travel a new pleasure. Get the facts at first hand. Right away, see your Studebaker dealer. Look over the car yourself. Once you see all that Studebaker offers, you'll make it your next car. And here's some real news. The 55 Studebaker is priced right down with the lowest. You bet it's the smart car to buy. Now, our true story of a man who learned that curing beats killing. From the pages of Reader's Digest, we bring you a matter of life or death. Mr. Kimball, what you're asking is utterly impossible. However, you have my word as chief of staff that we will do everything within our power to save the boy. But you must understand, this is a very delicate piece of surgery. That's why I want Dr. Sawyer. Don't you understand what I've been trying to tell you? You can't get him, and this operation can't wait. It's a matter of, of life or death. Now, we have other top-notch no, doctors. Sir. It's got to be Dr. Sawyer. He'll do it. Why do you think he'd make an exception in your case? You just give him that message I told you. He'll operate. But, Doctor, what shall I tell Mr. Kimball? Tell him I'm sorry, but it's out of the question. My hands are rusty. I'm too old to operate. Get him Dr. Johnson or Partridge or Miller. I can name half a dozen can do as much for him as I can. Does it also figure that the roughneck who clubbed this boy has the same name as yours? Did Byrne Kimball tell you that? He also told me to say that if his grandson dies, there'll be more shooting. That the Kimball Sawyer feud will open up again. If that half-witted kook thinks he can threaten me, you tell him for me. Tell him I'll do the operation. Skull's all but shattered. Wouldn't give a plug nickel for his chances. It'll take a miracle to pull him through. Bean, Rad. Uh, that'll be 18 cents. Well, you 
showed your dirty face in town at last. I didn't think you had the gumption. Now, will you take your licking here or outside? I wouldn't dirty my hands. The one thing all Sawyers have in common. A yellow streak down their back's a mile long. You ain't gonna take that from him, Red. Teach you to sniff around my girl. Marianne ain't your girl, and you know it. Whack him, Red. You can lick him. Now watch out for that, boys. Boys. Boys, enough is enough. Now get it. He ain't gonna turn my place into shambles. Wait for me, Judge. That's right smart exhibition of wrestler. Ain't nobody gonna harm my brother. Now go on, get this. Get this. I'll tell you myself. Go on, get it. You ain't heard the end of it. We ain't heard. You wish you hadn't started it. Fern did start it. Jumped me when my back was turned. Come on home, Rad. Gotta tell Pa. Us Sawyers don't take no truck from Kimball's. Or anyone else. Them Kimball's and Sawyers have been fighting off and on so far back that if you put it up to them when it was, they'd allow they didn't rightly know. My grandpappy, he said they was feuding four generations ago. Looks like they're just naturally disinclined to die a natural death. Yeah, there ain't been a killing in 12 years. Sure looks like a peck of troubles brewing. You seat me on the road and started throwing rocks at me. And you paid him no mind. No, Pa. And then he followed me into the store. And still you paid him no mind. Honest, Pa. I was just standing there minding my own business and... He stole up behind me and pushed me clean into the bin. I guess he was riled up on account of his girl is sweet on me. Well, Mary Ann ain't hogtied to him. And she told me herself at the sociable. Now, easy, Pa. Ain't no Kimball gonna stop a Sawyer from courting his choice. Honest, Pa. So help me, Pa. I had Rad saw you whipped to a pulp. Then his brother sneaks up and hits me a mean cloud on the head with a hunk of wood. I'd lick both of them if my back wasn't turned. Cowards. Two again one. You'd think they'd learn their lesson. Them Sawyers got short memories. Maybe they don't get around to visiting the cemetery much no more. Well, this here country ain't big enough for both of us. Get your guns, boys. The Almighty's my witness. Their dead blood is going to be on their own black hands now. Hurt much, Red. Oh, it ain't nothing but a scratch, Ma. I'll be all right. That's more than Vern Kimball can say for himself. I bagged him on. I think it was for Keith. You're all under arrest. What for? Frank is up the Kimball place. You can't arrest us. We fought fair. Vern Kimball mightn't live. Killing a man ain't a turkey shoot. You gotta learn once and for all you can't take the law in your own hands. You gotta answer to the court. Come on, boys, take their guns. What's your name, boy? Radford. Radford Sawyer. Well, I'm Dr. Jenkins. I've come to fix you up. Sit over there, Rad. It's only a flesh wound. Well, we better do something to prevent infection. What's 
fat. Picture the human stomach. Mine too? You're human, ain't you? Well, I'll be darned. And... atomy. What's that? Science of the structure of the parts of the body. Do all doctors have to know what's in this book? Like the Bible. Who wrote this here book? A man by the name of Gray. Is everything in it true? Well, as far as I know, we're always learning more. If a fellow knew everything that was in this here book, could he be a doctor? Well, he'd be on his way. You know, you're luckier than that neighbor of yours that you fellow shot. This is going to heal up all right. Yeah, well, he shot me first. You just tend to your own business. I reckon you're right, Rad. Healing is my business. Better to heal than to kill. Well, there you are. That does it. You seem mighty interested in this book. Would you like to have it? It's all right. Take it. I'll lend it to you. Might change your mind about a lot of things. in session. This morning, you were all on the stand, all had your say. So I think this thing should clear up pretty fast. Hank, as a counsel for the defense, uh, what do you got to say for the Sawyers? Well, Your Honor, now that the evidence is all in, I think we ought to thank both sides for the straightforward manner in which they testified, which is no more than we come to expect from God-fearing, hard-working folks and good neighbors. The fact is, friends, not one Kimball or one Sawyer and a parcel of both spoke their piece has ever denied that he took part in that little fracas in the woods or that shots were exchanged. Why should they deny it? There was no harm in it. Radford's as fit as a fiddle, as you can see. And if that's Vernon's ghost, he's a mighty hale and hearty one. Then what's all the commotion about? It just don't make sense over a little run and grudge. You gotta expect a little feud now and then when families live side by side from way back. No less than you expect a little to set to with your good woman now and then. In my opinion, it's a private matter. You betcha. We didn't ask to be aired. They brung us into court. Us Sawyers never wanted no truck with the law. See, Your Honor, just as friendly as can be, and just high-spirited. Then why didn't they wrestle it out? Because muscles just won't stand up after a hard day's hoeing and doing the chores. Much easier just to pull a little old trigger. Yes, well, seems like you're making a lot of sense, Hank. Yeah, don't see any use of wasting any more time. Besides which, holding up business to the store. <clears throat> Case dismissed. I ain't got no more hard feelings, Vern. You want to shake on it? He wants to shake on it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Vern, oblige him. Shake it off, clean to the neck. <laughs> you see that, Pa? Rad must be touched in the head. I've never been so mortified. Come on, let's get him. No, Pa. Not here in the courtroom. I declare, here I set out my best vittles to celebrate our court vindication. 
and you're all moping like sick hounds. Got nothing to say before strangers. Strangers? No son of mine had ever offered to shake the hand of a low-down Kimball. I'd rather twas a rattlesnake. Then stand there and take more insulting for his Christian charity. That's just it, Pa. I want to put an end to this feuding. The only one way to put an end to feuding with the Kimballs, that's to put them all six foot under. Here, I'm giving you a chance to redeem yourself, Radford. Go out and get Vernon. It ain't right, Pa. Now, son, you know your pa wouldn't ask you to do nothing that ain't right. The Bible says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, don't it? And we've always lived by the good book. Well, what about turn the other cheek? You tried that, and what did it get you? They rose up and smoked you again. And they spit in your face like it was a mongrel dog. Don't that mean nothing to you? Don't the name of Sawyer mean nothing? Where's your pride? Boy, Rat. So much you made of. Aim square like Pa taught you. Better to heal than to kill. Better to heal than to kill. And that was the toughest squirrel I ever had. <laughs> oh, <aw. laughs> I ain't gonna do it, Pop. It's crazy just shooting and more shooting. It ain't crazy shooting a Kimball. Better to heal than to kill. There's no place under my roof for a coward in a turncoat. Pa, Red didn't mean no harm. Hold your tongue, woman. And hear me, boy. You do as your pa says or get out. Then I'll get out. And don't come back till you find your backbone. You're a disgrace to the name of Sawyer. Here are three things you definitely don't need when you visit your nearby Studebaker dealer. You don't need glasses to see that Studebaker is the style leader. Those long, clean lines have won 34 international style awards. It's the most distinctive American car on the road today. And this low, glued-to-the-road design means safer, easier driving, too. Look at the new world of vision Studebaker gives you. Another thing you don't need is a big bag of money. This expensive-looking car with all its size and beauty, all its comfort and smartness and luxury, is actually priced with the lowest. That's right. You can own a Studebaker for the cost of the usual lowest-priced car. And you certainly don't need an oil well to run a Studebaker. This car gives you more miles per gallon of gas. And that's proved by Studebaker's second straight win of the mobile gas economy-run sweepstakes. For all its power, Studebaker is the number one economy car. There's one thing you do need when you visit your Studebaker dealer. That's a half hour behind the wheel of a Studebaker. Driving it will prove it's the smart car to buy. Studebaker, so much better made, worth more when you trade. Your Studebaker dealer is the right man to see for good, late model used cars, too. Certified used cars. Ask him about them. Let's return now to Act Two of our dramatic true story from the pages of Reader's Digest. A matter of life or death. Well, what can I do for you, sir? You been in another scrape? No, sir. I just brought your book back. Oh. Well, thank you. Just put it down. Put it down. Put it down. Well, come on. Speak up, boy. What is it? I want to be a doctor. Well, bless my soul. 
Whoever put that notion into your head? Your folks put you up to it? Got no folks no more. I'm on my own. Oh, I see. So you read a book and you think that's all there is to it? Well, I guess it was my fault for giving it to you. Why, son, it takes years and years of study to become a doctor. After that, years and years of hospital work. It's just about the hardest thing there is to become. So get it right out of your mind. If you did it, why can't I? How are you going to support yourself? I'm strong. There ain't no kind of work I wouldn't tackle. Anyway, nothing's too much when you got the hunger cramps for it like I do. All I'm asking you to do is show me how to go about it. I am to be a doctor anyway, whether you help me or not. Now, Radford, you go on home. Make it up with your folks. In a couple of weeks, you'll forget all about it. I won't either. Not in a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years. I won't never forget. I'll tell you what. You go out and earn $200 and then come back and see me. $200 is a mighty lot of work. Being a doctor is a mighty lot of work. I'll earn it. seen you in a dog's age. Well, what's your trouble this time? What is that? What is it? Well, what is it? It's the two hundred dollars you asked me to bring you. Well, I come by it honest. Well, who said you didn't? Sit down, Rad. You know, Radford, I underestimated you. I can imagine what it took to earn this. It wasn't easy. No, I know. Tomorrow, we're going to deposit this in the savings bank. And you're not going to see it for a long time. It's going towards your medical education. Nothing else. You understand? Now, let me see. <clears throat> First thing on a program is to enroll you in high school right away. After hours, I'll find something for you to do around here so you can earn your board and keep. Then, if you still stick to it, I'll find you a job in the hospital. Well, what are you sitting there for? When you're working for me, by jingles, you're working. Starting right now. Here. Part of your education, keeping this office clean. Dust carries germs, remember that. I'm going home around now. Be back at 4 o'clock. If any folks come in with their complaints, just tell them they have to wait. Well, what if somebody needs you? Well, there's a spare horse in the barn. Ride lickety split for rolling hills. I'll be there. Good luck, doctor. <laughs> Sawyer, 
Well, Vern Kimball. I operated the way you so politely requested me to. I know that. How is he? Alive. I know that. Will he stay alive? Well, it's out of my hands now. The next 48 hours will tell one way or another. Well, he had better pull through. He just better. Rad Sawyer. You Kimballs haven't changed much in 50 years. The same ignorant. You don't suppose that's going to help bring him back, do you? You'd better pray, Vernon. Well, you're coming along fine, son. A couple of months, you ought to be up and around again. You know, you're not at all like my Gramps made you out to be. How did he make me out? I couldn't rightly tell you to your face. <laughs> I can well imagine. Say, is it true, Dr. Sawyer, that you used to live in our neck of the woods? It certainly is. Right up at the top of the hill where you turn into the old Martin place. You know where that is. I reckon I do. Long time ago. How'd you ever get to be a doctor coming from a place like that? I read a book a doctor loaned me. He was dressing a wound that I got in a fight with one of you Kimballs. Does it take long to learn to be a doctor? Well, it's taken me all my life, and I'm still learning. Well, I'll come in and see you again in a day or two. Say, what was the name of that book? The one you borrowed? It was called Gray's Anatomy. I'll send you around a copy. You might find it interesting. Oh, it's you again, you old coot. Still gunning for me? Don't think I mightn't have shot you, Rad Sawyer, if the young one hadn't come out of it. And I'd have got you that other time, too, if I'd aimed a little further to the right. I'm glad now I didn't. Well, you can thank God for that, Vern Kimball. Fifty years ago at the courthouse, you offered me your hand, Rad. This is Hugh Riley, your host for the Studebaker Packard Corporation and its dealers saying goodbye. Just before we go, here's an advanced scene from next week's TV Reader's Digest story. A dramatic and true happening. Incident on the China coast. What's happened, Stewardess? I don't know yet. It sounds like bullets. to you by the Studebaker Packard Corporation and its dealers. TV Reader's Digest has been selected for viewing by our armed forces here and overseas. <laughs>